That's fucking delightful. Isn't delightful. Fucking good combination playing. Sliding balls into space. Good. Excellent. The other one the fucking roll. Hello everyone and welcome to the Rover Up Hot Player Ratings Podcast in association with Southern Community Soup Kitchen. My name is Anthony Waterson and I'm joined by Craig Chapman. How are you? Very good, mate. Very good. 4-0 win away to Lincoln City. You've got to be happy with that, haven't you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, as we said, kind of before we went on recording, nobody does 180s like Sunderland Football Club, do they? We've had a fan base in meltdown thinking that perhaps we're going to be on the brink of administration and then lo and behold, by tea time, it's working out how many points clear we're going to be at the top of the league come Easter. So it's been an interesting day, but thankfully the football has, uh, has been decent for a change. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm over the moon. Champions League football in three years. <laughs> and we're also joined by the player ratings extraordinaire, Mal Dugdale. How are we doing, mate? Good evening. I'm, uh, I'm very, very well. I'm much happier, Malcolm, than I've been in previous weeks. Didn't see that coming, but fantastic to see it and to experience it for a, a bit of positivity for a change, which uh, hopefully we can carry on with. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll go straight on to the game. Um, Sunderland, have, like we say, we've won 4-0 um, away to Lincoln City, who had only conceded 10 goals in the league prior to today. Well, now you've conceded 14, lads, so there we go. To be fair, Lincoln started the game better, Craig. Um, after 8 minutes and 12 minutes, clean through one goal. One goes wide and one an excellent save by Lee Burge to, to put Johnson off, uh, who was clean through one goal. Really good goalkeeping. Absolutely, yeah. I think the goalkeeping position is something that we've all been quite overly concerned about in recent weeks. Um, a lot of our podcasts of late has been championing in the case of maybe getting Patterson a goal and giving him a start. But no, I was I was really impressed with Lee Burge today. I think, you know, he's probably going to go something of his unsung hero, really, because it was an emphatic win and we're going to be focusing on the goal scorers and our attack and play. But, you know, as he said, I thought he'd done very well to slow down Johnson early on um, when a goal looks an absolute certain. And like I said, we... Really could have been one or two goals down early doors. But no, I, th- I thought he'd done very well. I thought his distribution was okay. When he was under pressure, I thought he he was very well. Um, It was just a, an all-around solid performance from him. And, you know, he really is our number one goalkeeper now. So I hope we are going to have the stopping of the chopping and changing, if you like, um, mm-hmm. of bringing in, say, like Remy Matthews, as we have of late. Um, You know, that, that's Lee Burgess' position now. So, I, I, yeah. It's it's a good benchmark from him to to return to the side with a really really strong performance. Yeah, totally agreed. I thought it was his best game for Sunderland actually. I thought, I thought he was absolutely excellent. Even though he yeah. didn't have that much to do, what he did, he did well, like very well. Um, yeah. so we'll go on to the the first goal. Um, Mal, we haven't seen much of this from Sunderland all season, but running into the box, running at players with pace. Jack Diamond does it. Um, gets brought down. Probably a soft penalty, but come to be dispatched by Grant Lebeder. Yeah, Grant's the man, isn't he? You know, when it comes to the penalty spot, he's so cool, calm, collected. I think Diamond deserved the penalty. Uh, he got mm-hmm. pulled back on the shoulder a little bit, could have gone down with the first contact, didn't. And I think that's probably what won it for him because he didn't yeah. get down too easy, you know. Um, and, and Grant is, uh, you know, he's coolness personified and he put the goalie the wrong way. Just what we needed as well, just to get a foothold in the game. And then it was just onward and upward from there. You know, we... Uh, Willie really grabbed all of it from that point onwards, which was fantastic. Yeah, we sure did. I mean, like no less than nine minutes later, Craig, uh, a cross into the box. And what Lee Johnson said last week, he wanted to see more more players into the box. And uh, Kyle McFadgen was one of them players who, you know, put put a cross back in for Charlie Wyke, um, who put it away again, a typical Charlie Wyke finished, right place, right time. Yeah, it was it was players in abundance in the box, wasn't it? And that's been the, the notable change over the course of Lee Johnson's short time here, the week that he's had. You're absolutely right. Every opportunity today, we we flooded the box. But more, more importantly, we had players coming in and getting in the right position. And that goal, t- to be fair, you probably go back a few weeks ago and not only would we not score it, we wouldn't have players in said position. So it was an excellent example of the way that we are certainly trying to to go forward, having this attacking ethos um, and just really taking the handbrake off. We, we do actually have some really good attacking players here, our fullbacks as well. So it was it was excellent to see the likes of McFadgen getting forward. Um, you know he he's going to have a difficult task to to cement that position down if Denver Hume returns from injury. Um, so I think he'd done himself very well at day. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously to to get in the box, get into a dangerous position, and and as you said, Charlie White, all he needed to do was was tap it home, and it'll be the easiest one he scored so far this season. But the most important thing and the most reassuring thing is is that all getting in those positions. So yeah, it was it was an easy goal, but it was a very good goal on the eye. Yeah, certainly. And then uh, on the 42nd minute, a, counter, a great counter-attack and play by Sunderland. I think Lincoln had a corner and we 
We got it away from a corner. I mean, Max Power was heavily involved. Aidan McGeady with a superb ball into uh, to Jack Diamond, who and Malcolm. I mean, the lads are second or third appearance of the season, and he puts in a finish like that. I mean, that's just a great goal, isn't it? What a fantastic time for him. I agree, and uh, we're hoping Grant's took home the goal of the month for November. I think as a team goal, that's going to be up there for the month of December. To be honest. <laughs> Because, you know, that went from, and, and we nearly did at the time before when Diamond was fractionally offside, you know, a couple of minutes earlier, yeah. you know, the same same kind of breakdown in, in our defensive, the edge of our defensive third. Um, but the ball through from McGrady was spot on. I thought Diamond had buggered it up. I thought I thought his touch had made a mess of it, you know. Uh, but the way he just curled it with his left foot in that top corner, man, you know, kids, kids are fearless, aren't they? And that's what we've been missing. We've been missing kids that need to get into that box and just think, of course I can do that, I'll have a go, you know. Um, and it was nothing less than the lad deserved, you know. He got the penalty for us, he curled that one in, he was involved all the way through and a uh, fantastic performance. And if if nothing um, can cement a, a, a role in a start in 11, um, if that can't do it, then, then nothing can because that was a, a very, very good performance, even though he had to come off early to preserve his is kind of yellow card situation, you know, great, great game. Yeah, I actually thought that was a superb substitution on our... Me too, absolutely. Great management decision. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially with League One referees, you know, any little tackle that goes in, you kind of expect a, a yellow card. So, you know, well done, Lee Johnson, on that. Well done to uh, Jack Diamond for that first half. We'll we'll see more of him, I'm sure, with this season. You know, that place for him is pretty much cemented. And, you know, we said off, off, off air, didn't we? Lyndon Gooch and Chris Maguire, who did come on from and did well, but they've got a hell of it. They've got to kick up the arse now, lads. So it's great to see. Um, into the second half, and, you know, we let we let Lincoln come at us. You know, we seemed content with the 3-0. And then uh, another great team goal, um, Tom Flanagan, piercing the defence with a 40-yard ball, finds Chris Maguire, who outruns his man, pulls it back, and an excellent finish by Charlie White, Craig. Really good goal. Yeah, the uh, the goal had like the hallmarks of, you know, when you play like an FA Cup game against a lower league or lower division team. I mean, granted, obviously that doesn't bode well for us because we got put out by Mansfield, but <laughs> it, it had it had that hallmarks of it of basically like us just showing a lot of class. And what I thought was great as well was, was somebody like Tom Flanagan, who has come under a lot of criticism um, throughout the course of his time at Sunderland. Sometimes he can be a bit erratic, sometimes he can be you know, Bambi on ice, but he was just so cool and calm the way he intercepted the ball. And he just had that, uh, that the right idea. He just knew straight away the movement of, of Chris Maguire just, just bursting down the wing. And I think that, again, is is perhaps a testament already to the way that Lee Johnson wants them playing. You can imagine that that, that is something that they've perhaps identified in training to say, look, as soon as we get the ball, we're going to get that straight out wide. We're going to stretch play. And again, it was it was just an absolutely outstanding ball to, to Maguire. He, you know, turned his turned his man excellently, and and there's Charlie White with a with a lovely finish. I think today, I mean, the, the reality is we've we've scored three really good goals. Um, mm-hmm. and and as we've said, obviously, if Grant Lebbett is going home with goal of the month for November, I mean, bloody hell, there's 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 two really good, really good goals that you could be uh, showcasing for for goal of the month this month. And you know, I'll even go as far as saying if say Man City or somebody like that scored that this evening, then I tell you what, Sky Sports News would be be running that on the hour every hour but yeah it was <laughs> like I said it was it was just an excellent team play goal and you know we were putting the tweets out saying you know look at this goal look at that goal and it's just a far cry from what we've seen uh from from Sunderland in recent weeks we've had elements of good play perhaps but um we've been really uninspiring when getting into the final third but today like I said I we we look like a side who's finally having a bit of belief about them a bit of confidence and if we can maintain those levels then you know, I think we're we're going to be able to get right back up the league. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really, really congested now with obviously us beating Lincoln and Hull have lost. Um, but, I mean, Mal, I'll ask you this question. Last week after we got beat up Wigan, obviously that was Lee Johnson's first game. You know, he was basically in the dugout oversee the game, wasn't he? He wasn't. Did you see that coming in a week that where we've lost to the team bottom of the league, we've barely been able to muster a shot on target to scoring four goals away from home? Probably could have been five or six, couldn't it? I mean, the change in a week has been unbelievable, hasn't it? I didn't see it coming, no. Um, I was hoping it might come. You know, the most optimistic of Sunderland fans is probably a little bit less optimistic than I can be on a good day. Um, but to to feel that somebody <laughs> can make that much difference, we mentioned offline before, you know, that that team very much, apart from the McGeady kind of scuffle with the previous manager, that team could have been picked by Parkinson. And 
I would put my last shirt on it. They would never in a hundred games have played the way they played today because the the whole yeah. and he wouldn't have picked diamond and he wouldn't have picked diamond yeah because he's <laughs> he doesn't trust him as an inexperienced player. But the whole ethos, the whole strategy, tactics, you know, the the intent, you can change them things quickly. The magic is how quickly the team get on board with it and pick it up and run with it. And I just couldn't believe how, how well, if today it becomes the way it is, I couldn't believe how well today the manager, sorry, coach, and the team gelled. And the energy was just incredible, man. 87 minutes in, people are busting their asses to put a ball in the box when we're fallen out up, you know. We couldn't be bothered to do that when we were 1-0 up against teams three, four, five weeks ago. Um, so I didn't expect that to answer your question. And sorry, a bit long-winded. Didn't but worry about but it, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. And I just hope it's not a one-off. I hope it continues to steer that we all build, you know, because if so, we've got some cracking spectacles to go with. Yeah, just, just building on that, if it's, if it's all right, I think one of the most important things that I got from Lee Johnson's post-match comments was he straight away said that we're not going to go anywhere and try and draw for a game, you mm. know, where we're not going to be setting up anywhere and saying that a draw is an acceptable result. And I think I think you've just got to admire that straight away from the offset that he's come in and we pretty much have been at ground zero after the, the back end of last week to Sorry. club in turmoil and fairness. Um, and if you say put that into contrast with maybe the comments from, say, Phil Parkinson blaming a downward slope of Fleetwood, or if you maybe put that into comparison with his comments post Doncaster where we've just conceded in the last minute and he's saying he's happy with the draw then then that's that's the most important thing I'm taking away from today. I'm already looking at that and identifying that Lee Johnson not only is a winner, he's also coming out and he's finding he's finding issues with us actually still winning away 4-0 from home. He's he's still not ultimately satisfied with that performance. He knows we can get better and and I think that's what we need. Yeah. We need somebody yeah. to to come in, assert themselves and ensure that the standards that have plummeted, not just dropped, they've absolutely plummeted, that they return to where they should be. Um, we're not an over-expecting fan base by any stretch. Phil Parkinson's comments a few weeks back saying that because of the the issues with the wage cap, if you like, and stuff along those lines, would make it almost impossible for us to go away and, and beat teams 3 or 4 nil. We've just done that today against a team who is yeah. second in the league, that had the best defence in the league. So, yeah, I'm... As you can tell, I'm very much pro Lee Johnson. Um, I'm digging all of his post-match comments with all of these things, his cliches and his business jargon and stuff like that. But it just it just epitomised for me today what Sunderland Football Club should be. That we should be going away from home and and basically beating anybody in our way. And if we don't, then by God, we're not going to come out and, and justify it and defend us. We, we need to make sure that, like I said today, it's not going to be you know, just a, just a one-off way. We need to ensure that this is the consistent levels that, that we aspire for yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's showing a bit of arrogance, isn't it? Showing a bit of arrogance, yeah. you know, which which what we need to do, you know, at the end of the day, it is, it's Sunderland Football Club in League One, you know, we need to be going to teams and blowing them away to say, like, look, this is who we are. Yeah, like like you say, I mean, you've hit the nail on the head there, mate. It's fantastic. And fingers crossed, you know, it's the start of something yeah. big. You know, that's that's all I can say about that. Um, what we'll do is we'll rattle on Lee's player ratings. I will take Lee Burge. I thought, like I just mentioned there, I thought this was Lee Burge's best performance for Sunderland. Didn't have a lot to do, but what he did, he did very well and made a very, very crucial save when the score was nil-nil. So I've given him a very strong seven. Craig, will start with Conor McLaughlin for you, the back. Very good performance again from him. Yeah, again, here's another player who is a prime example of, you know, written off. Cast aside, and then all of a sudden he gets back in the the team, and lo and behold, he's had a really good resurgence, hasn't he? He's yeah. um he's done well in recent games. I was really impressed with him today. I thought he he got forward when he needed to. I think his decision making certainly improved. He he seems to have got a bit of an intelligence about him when he's on the ball. Didn't think he was troubled very much, besides maybe the opening stages within the first ten minutes. So excellent cross, as we've mentioned, obviously for the for the second goal. Um, great delivery that's been knocked down for McFadden. I've uh, I've given him a seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. won't dispute that. Most improved player in a Sunderland shirt this season for me. That's for a long time, about yeah. Conor McLaughlin. Yeah, Mal will go with um, Bailey Wright for you. Back back to normal. Yeah, a little bit, wasn't it today? It was back to his boring self when you don't realise he's doing a bloody good job, wasn't yeah. it? You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he dealt with. I mean, we I heard a, I read and I heard a lot about their front line prior to the game. And after a couple of wobbles over a couple of the previous games, you know, it was easy for Bailey to to have a little bit of a challenge today. 
but I think he he had the uh, front line in his pockets. Uh, he was very very strong, and uh, yeah, I, I gave him a seven again primarily because. He didn't have that much to do in the first 10, 20 minutes, a bit more than later in the game, but very solid performance. And and it's good to see him back on the horse where he has been, bossing that defence and really running the back line. It was a, a very impressive performance for me. Yeah, I'm going to take Tom Flanagan. Um, I'll give Tom Flanagan a seven as well. Um, he gets an extra mark just for that 40-yard pass. I thought it was excellent. Um, little bit <laughs> kind of out the back four. I thought he was kind of the weaker link just because he was given too many silly free kicks away, which he does need to kind of cut down. But in all fairness, Tom Hopper, the Lincoln striker, was trying to kill him all game. Um, so, yeah, just a solid seven again. Uh, Craig, we've got uh, Cal McFadgen for you. Tell you what, I think we're going to be all sevens this entire <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what, I, I thought he'd done well. He perhaps got away with one early doors when um, when he had a, an early mistake and, and Johnson got him free on goal. I think it was the first one of the two occasions where he broke through. But after that, I thought he, he reacted well. He was really, really comfortable, actually. Um, he got forward well, certainly in terms of getting in the box. Thought he supported Aidan McGeady really well when he needed to. So, again, it was the, the type of performance that I would expect. And again, I'm going to go with the seven. Mal, are we going to break the seven hoodoo now with Max Power? Um, probably not. <laughs> no, no, but you know, some I've I've been quite a critic of Max Power over recent weeks. You know, before the new coach Same. came in, he's been quite nondescript. He's been a little bit. You don't know what he's there for. Uh, and when I saw the midfield of of led bit of power and scow, and I thought, oh bloody hell, more of the same. You know, they're all going to be tippy tappy in at left, right, and uh, but you know, Power was involved from the off. He's getting wide when he needs to. He had a, a, a pretty good shot, if I remember correctly, where the, the goalkeeper managed to scramble it. But then, for some reason, that led to one of the Lincoln breakaways, if I remember. Mm. But then Flanagan went down with a head injury for that break, so I think the ref was a bit out of order not to pull it back. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, Power's another seven for me. I know this is a little bit samey, but um, I don't want that to sound like a criticism because he was everywhere, you know. He was much more like his yeah. old attacking self, and it was good to see, you know. So, so yeah, a solid seven, maybe pushing a seven and a half if we're going to go decimal. You can have, you can have a decimal since we've give everyone a seven. We'll go seven and a nice half. One. <laughs> um, I will say one thing for Max Paolo. I think we know where Phil Parkinson's um, poster of forward passes, forward runs has gone. It's on Max Powell's bedroom wall, isn't it? Because that's all he did. You know what I mean? He was absolutely. I thought he was. Ex- I did give him an eight, and I am. I have been so I, I give him an Max eight. Powell this season. Yeah. I'll I'll play devil's advocate. I yeah. I give him an eight. I thought um I thought he was really clever with his uh, with his use of possession in the second half. I thought he played a really big part in the second goal. But uh, it's just just nice to to be nice about everybody for Agreed. a change, isn't it? Agreed. Yeah, it is. It is. And I'm gonna go back to the seven mark again for Grant Ledbetter. Um, you know, typical Grant Ledbetter performance. Yeah, that's all I've wrote down under him. Grant Ledbetter played like Grant Ledbetter. Scored a very good penalty. Broke the play up lovely. You know, just. He would have gotten, to be honest, he would have got an eight had he not made that silly tackle right at the end, and that's lost him his eight. But, you know, we'll give him a seven. Uh, Craig, Josh Scoen, seven? <laughs> you know what? I'm tying between a six and a seven. Yeah. Um, probably the weakest link out of the midfield at day, I and agree. I don't necessarily I think that, that it reflects a bad performance, but I just think that we were very, very comfortable in midfield at day. Um, thought he broke a play well, certainly important, um, you know, pressing. If memory serves, he did miss a big chance, actually, uh, to make a 4-0 just before yeah. half-time. But, I mean, to be fair, we'd already had enough in the tank at that point, hadn't we? Um, you know what? I'm Christ, it's literally, it's the George Honeyman pod, isn't it? Everybody's going to be slating this on Twitter, basically <laughs> saying it's George Honeyman out of 10. Um, sod it. I'm going to have to give him a 7 because I know I've yeah. got higher marks for everybody else. So give me somebody better <laughs> next time, please. I think you're being generous, Craig, because I... I... I think if Scowan had cut that ball back where his first touch let him down for that fourth goal, if it was for the fourth, McGeady was in like 20 yards of space on the penalty spot. So, um, yeah. you know, I would have edged towards a six. But, you know, that's splitting hairs. You know, we were 3-0 up and he, he had a slightly bad touch on a through ball. You know, I can't crucify the lad. Yeah, would you like to take Jack Diamond while you're talking, mate? I'd love to, mate. I'd I'd like to I'd like Go to take it. him. I'd like to clone him, and I'd like to <laughs> stick him across our front three because the boy was an absolute genius. Even though, like we said, he's he's only played forty five minutes, and he was quite rightly protected by the head coach. He's a young lad, and when you're on a yellow, 
and you're getting a little bit kind of overexcited, it's easy to let the green mist come down. So I think it was a very astute mm-hmm. move by the boss to to bring him off. As we said, it gave all the players that started on the bench a bit of a rocket up the trousers to show that what they can do. Um, and, you know, other players that came off the bench, I think, played well because of what they had to match up with. Even though he only played a half, I gave him an eight. And I think he probably yeah. could have been uh, easily a nine if he'd have carried on the way he was in the second half, but he didn't. Um, so I, I gave him a yeah. strong eight. Um, and I'm, I'm going to stick my neck out and say that boy is instrumental to our success for the rest of the season. I just hope he doesn't get injured because we've seen too many injuries already. 100% agree with you. 100% agree with you. He's going to be huge. Um, I've gone back down the seven route, so, you know, killer's Twitter for Aidan McGeady, and he nearly did get an eight. He really very, very nearly got an eight. Um, in fact, sorry, I'm going to give him an eight because I thought he was excellent. Um, he's he's passing. He's he's so clever, isn't he, with his passing? And you know what he did today, which we haven't seen enough of, a lot of in McGeady, he tracked back brilliantly, didn't he? Like, yeah. a lot of it. Like, so, he helped Kyle McFadden out so much, and Obviously, I'm, I wonder if that's just been like he's been told to do that. But yeah, I thought you know he was instrumental in a couple of the goals. Probably could have had one himself. Um, yeah, I'm, I had seven written down, but I'm going to give him an eight. Um, and Charlie Wake to round up the eleven, Craig. Now I've been perhaps one of Charlie Wake's biggest critics, but today I thought he was absolutely brilliant. I really did. Um, I seen a lot of comments prior from people in our group chat and people on the socials who were. A little surprised that he was recalled, perhaps ahead of Will Grigg. I think people mm. really wanted us to persist with Grigg again this week, but I thought he took both of his goals superbly. Um, I was really impressed with how he held the ball up. I thought his pressing was excellent. Indy really did justify it today, I think, as to why he really is, I suppose, fair to say, now that he's that he's our number one striker. What's that? Is that 10, ten goals? Pumps, yeah. Already yeah, before, 10 goals now. Yeah, bef- yeah, before Christmas, and I think he only got to six or five or six last season. So that again for me shows that he's he's brimming with confidence. Um and, and like I said, the way the way he took his goal was um for for four nil, sorry, was 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 absolutely sublime. And you would just sincerely hope that that level of confidence is gonna brush across all three strikers now because um if Charlie Wake, you know, if he picks up an injury or if he gets booked and, and picks up a suspension or whatever, yeah, we're gonna need somebody to come in and fill fill the boots. But yeah, I, I think he was I think he was excellent today and I went as high as a nine. Um, yeah, I have which is what, uh, yeah. So I think unofficially he is our podcast man of the match based on what we've said so far. But yeah, no, long long may it continue. I think he was just an absolute nightmare for them. I think across the front three today, um, we were just fearless. Yeah. And that was that was a really refreshing change. And for somebody like Charlie Wyke, who, like I said, he gets so much shit. It was it was really, really great to see him play with so much freedom and so much enjoyment. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a nine for me. Yeah, I totally agree. I've got nine written down yeah, as well. I won't um, disagree. I'll quickly we'll go nine. Nine, so no sevens. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll quickly rattle off the subs. I've got Chris Maguire as a seven. Thought he did very well when he came on. Excellent assist for the fourth goal. Um, and all the rest I've given sixes. Um, I thought they all did the jobs when they came on, especially... Elliot Embleton and Will Grigg thought looked very lively when they all came on. So what is left, lads, is Rate the Manager, the return of Rate the Manager. Now, Lee Johnson, we've won 4 nil away from home. It's going to be a high mark, Craig, isn't it? Oh, it's a 10 out of 10. A 10? Yeah, straight away. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, we'll give credit to, say, Phil Parkinson for ensuring that we had a pretty decent away record of being unbeaten away from home. But if you look at some of those places where we've dropped points already... And then you've got Lee Johnson coming out saying we're not going to go anywhere and we're not going to settle for a point and we are going to go and assert ourselves and be brave. He likes the word ball, doesn't he? Um, I, get, I, I thought we were absolutely brilliant today. We weathered an early storm and I think in respect of his selections, you know, he was he was justified in putting Jack Diamond in there from the start. Mm. He perhaps could have quite easily came out and we could have went with a lot more experience, but... He's already discussed that he's prepared to give some of the young lads a chance and, and that certainly paid off today. I thought his use of substitutions, all five for a change, timed to absolute perfection. And I, I think we just killed the game off at, at the right stage. We we were absolutely brilliant today. And, you know, you, you reverse back to a week ago and you've got those concerns thinking, where on earth are we going to end up? But all of a sudden you get one under the belt like this and you're already brimming, brimming with confidence and we, we look forward to Tuesday now. So... If we can carry that in, yeah, brilliant. But absolutely 10 out of 10, no doubt for me. Yeah, perfect 10, Mel. Uh, I'd give him a nine. 
Um, <laughs> oh, honestly, Malcolm. Malcolm. I, I, you, might, you might think I'm letting the side down a little bit, Craig, but the bloke's his own biggest <laughs> critic, right? And he's admitted that it is his expectation that we win as many games as possible. So I'm not going to give him a 10 off one 4 nil away win, even though it's against a very, very decent opponent. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll be nice. I'll give him a 9.5. And, a half. and the, 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 the reason I'll give him a 9.5 <laughs> and a half is... He said before the game, um, in reflection on the, the Oldham game, I think it was, and, and in the presser as well, he wants our players to start attacking the front post. I don't know if you remember that quote. He wants them to attack the front yeah. post. Even if you miss it at the front post, there might be somebody at the back to tap it in. Now, interestingly, he put White in, and I thought, OK, we're going to get loads of crosses in. At least he's got the height and the hold-up capability that maybe Grigg hasn't got. But both of Charlie's Wake's goals were all on the floor. Greg could have put both of them in. Um so and it was it was achieved by attacking that front post. So I'll give him an eye and a half. If he if he does the same thing for another couple of games, I'll uh, I'll stop being my Craig Revit Horwood or whatever and I, I might get two digits out. <laughs> I've gone nine and a half as well. Just you should have gone first, and and then Craig wouldn't have beat me up so yeah, much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just what you both said. It's been an absolutely superb performance. You know, subs at the right place. But we don't want to rest on this lads, no, do we? So we're going to pretend now he's going to think he's going to think his job's done. Nine and a half, and that's pretty much that, lads. So thanks so much for coming on, uh, Craig and Mal. Um, we'll see you down the line somewhere else. Thank you very much. <laughs>